The mysteries of Islam fascinate us time and time again. This is no different from the life story of the Prophet. Who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? An illiterate desert merchant who one day stumbled upon amazing Arabic rhetoric? Or was he the creation of Allah's greatest light? Sent down to earth to pull man out of ignorance and bring them to the purest of truths? I, Ali Burji, am on a journey to discover the real story behind the Prophet, the real story behind our religion, the root, the beginning, the cradle of civilization. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina wa Habibina Abu al-Qasim Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. وَلَعَنَتُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ عَدَائِهِ مَجْمَعِينَ مِنَ الْآنِ إِلَىٰ قِيَامِ يَوْمِ الدِّينَ Dr. Al-Aziz, so we've come to the point where Quraysh have abandoned the embargo since the discussion with Abu Talib regarding the document, the treaty which was placed in the Kaaba. So the Quraysh found the document which was eaten by termites and only wherever the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was written, the termites did not chew on it. So now the Quraysh must be very desperate. They, they, don't, they don't see any other solution other than um, eliminating the Holy Prophet And logically I presume that the Holy Prophet as well will be informed about this. Uh, so if we can go inshallah into the details regarding the events um, of the preparation and the scheme, the whole um, um, strategy, the plan regarding the assassination of the Holy Prophet and the preparation for um, the Hijrah. Bismillah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad Wa ala adaihim ajma'in ila qiyam yawm al-dun Ilahi amin Quraysh were determined to eliminate the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi in any way they could Allah's messenger and after uh, the uh, death of his uh, devout and loyal supporter, his uncle uh, Abu Talib, alayhi. Alayhi, and also the death of his uh, devout and loyal wife, Sayyida Khadija, Salamullah alayha, uh, Archangel Jibrail descended upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He said, you've lost your supporters and, uh, you, and you must uh, migrate to Medina. It is said that the um, Quraysh came together and they said, we have to do something about him once and for all. Basically, storm his house. Um, um, they and they were thinking how to do it, and they, um, of course, there was this notion that who's going to do it. Mm. It is said that in in their meeting that they were sitting, it's reported that an old person appears to them or comes to the door, and he gives them a suggestion. They were. Um, not sure how to go about uh, addressing uh, um, the issue of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Basically, oh, um, trying to get how rid to of deal him. with it. How to deal with it? Trying to get rid of him. And this um, old man, he said to them, "I give you a suggestion." Uh, he said, "You're fearful that um, if someone from this tribe goes and kill uh, Muhammad." Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi Then um, you're fearful of Bani Hashim. They said yes. He said my suggestion is that one warrior from every clan uh, is put forward so that there is, 
there is a group of warriors attack the house of the Prophet and kill the Prophet and because you have a member from every single clan of Quraysh then Bani Hashim would be faced with not a single clan but the entire Quraysh and they won't have the wherewithal to mm. uh, to fight you if they, if they do they will be defeated and they really liked that idea this they thought that was a clever idea okay and who was this old man and it is reported in in uh, in our uh, traditions that uh, this old man was Satan himself Shayt oh, Iblis Allah. he appeared to them uh, Allah. So Shaitan himself, he he uh, intervened basically. He intervened he and he, he put forward this uh, mm. this, if you like, um, solution to the problem okay. that they, they were having, and they really liked this idea. And of course, Iblis appeared to him, appeared to uh, when um, the Khilafah was usurped from Imam Ali al -Salam, He also appeared there and um, made allegiance. But inshallah, we'll come to that in the future. Okay. Um, With regards to shaitan, it's quite interesting um, because this is proof that shaitan can um, appear as a human being and walk among us. Uh, is that something he can do today as well? Um, of course, if he could do it then, he could do it now. But inshallah, we'll go, we'll go into that at some other stage. Okay. Um, so uh, they decided to do this. They decided to uh, um, uh, put forward one person from every clan, which they did. Forty warriors, if you like, uh, mm -hmm. were gathered. And uh, it was decided that um, they will uh, attack the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while uh, in his sleep at the time, at, dawn, at, at the time of dawn. Mm -hmm. Just before Fajr. And, and, the, and, the, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was uh, informed of this uh, plot hmm. by uh, Archangel Gibrail and um, he um, the Prophet Sallallahu decided to go along with this uh, and leave migrate uh, at midnight or at night um, for Medina he made the arrangements if you like and mm -hmm. um, he asked Imam Ali alayhi salam he told Imam Ali, informed Imam Ali about his plan, and he said to him, "Will you sleep in my bed instead, while I'm um, leaving?" Uh, and Imam Ali said to him, "Will you be safe?" He said, "Yes, I will be safe." He said, "If you if you will be safe, then I will stay in your place." Subhanallah. And again, it comes to show that in the most important phases in the, in the life of the Holy Prophet وسلم, he goes to no one else but Amir al-Mu'mineen which comes again to prove a statement that the, the next one in charge, the most trustworthy to Rasulullah, his best friend, his companion, everything is Amir al-Mu'mineen and he goes to no none other but him. And of course, Amir al-Mu'mineen, you, would, you wouldn't expect a lesser response. Yeah. Subhanallah. Um, Alhamdulillah. In fact, Mir Mumin alayhi salam accepts the most dangerous tasks. I mean, this uh, uh, basically uh, is uh, extremely dangerous. J similar one when he had a, in, mm. a, in, a, in a conversation when d during the embargo, when his father Abu Talib alayhi salam said to him, "You come sleep in, in the place of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and uh, he as a as a the point that I want to make that this will, uh, um, this could lead to my death, which uh, Abu Talib thought that he was afraid, but he was saying, uh, Imam Ali said to him, I just wanted to show you that I am ob totally obedient to you. Um, so in here, again, Abu, Imam Ali uh, faced imminent death, mm. um, basically killing by 40 warriors, if you like, Quraysh warriors. Uh, and despite that, he uh, accepted the, the, the challenge and accepted that he would sacrifice himself uh, uh, for the safety of the Prophet. <laughs> and um, the importance of this 
is so great that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed a verse, uh, an ayah um, in, the, in the Quran, um, which uh, Allah declared that there are those who will um, um, offer themselves, give up themselves, their souls, uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, I can, if you like, I can uh, tell you which ayah, which uh, Please. surah um, you probably need. I don't know. Shall I do it Please. here? Bismillah. Um, um, it's uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 207. It says, ومن الناس من يشري نفسه ابتغاء مرضات الله والله رؤوف بالعباد And in Eng the English translation is, Amongst the people is he who sells his life seeking the pleasure of Allah. And Allah is most kind to his servants. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals this ayah uh, about this, about what the Amir al-Mu'mini did, which is uh, agreeing to stay in the pl in place of the Prophet sallallahu to yeah. give the Prophet a chance to escape from Mecca uh, and uh, escape the um, assassination attempt mm -hmm. by the warriors of Quraysh. Um, so who did, who did he, the Holy Prophet sallallahu who did he flee with from Mecca at night? Um, and where did he he head to? To see they, if we can they had the to, yes. assassination to a pause. So the Holy Prophet at night he leaves Amir al Mu'minin salam in his bed, mm -hmm. and he flees with who? Yeah, it, it, uh, there are um, <coughs> the general acceptance is that um, he he of course he went to uh, Ghar uh, Thawr. Ghar Thawr. Yeah, the the cave which uh, f f first ever um, Archangel um, Jibrail salam appear to him. Yes. Now that's Ghar Hira. This ah, is, the, Ghar this is Hira, closer. Ghar Thor okay. is further away from Mecca. Oh, okay, okay. And um, uh, yes, he, because when they came, attacked, they, and they found Amir al-Mu'mineen mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, there, and his first encounter was with Khalid ibn Walid, and he was uh, like his father, Khalid ibn Walid, like his father, were, they were staunch uh, opponents of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and um, um, Imam Ali Alayhi Salaam throw him to the ground and uh, they realize that he is not the Prophet mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, he's uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib Alayhi Salaam uh, there are very narration where whether they they said some narrations say that um, there was some clashes there some narrations say that uh, Say that, that keep him alive. Don't kill him. We'll kill him tomorrow. But let's let's uh, find immediately the find the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi. Um, And uh, the Prophet um, headed for and stayed in Ghar Thor. Um, the majority of uh, cases say say that he was in in that Ghar in that cave with Abu Bakr. Um, some. Some say that he wasn't, he was with someone else. Um, um, but the overwhelming, overwhelming majority amongst uh, Sunni scholars and Shia scholars say that uh, it was Abu Bakr who was with him. Mm -hmm. um, and again, just as there was a, a Quranic ayah, Quranic verse revealed about um, uh, concerning Imam Ali alayhi salam staying in, in, in the bed of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa which, which I just read for you, um, another ayah was revealed in the cave, um, concerning the cave and the person who was with him, and um, and and that that verse it says Thaniya ithnain idh huma fil ghar idh yaqulu li sahibihi la tahzan inna Allah ma'ana fa anzal Allahu sakinatahu alayhi. It's um, ayah number say? ayah number forty of Surah at Tawbah. It means um, those two were in the cave. Mm -hmm. um, while they were in the cave, he said to his companion. Um, he, he, be, the ayah begins with the fact that you did not support him, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa and uh, he was forced out. And uh, he was with another person in the cave and he was telling that is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, um, who wasn't supported by 
uh, by the people. He, he was forced out. He, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi said to his companion, "La tahzan, do not grieve. In Allah ma'ana." Um, فأنزل الله سكينته. So all of these are talking about two people. فأنزل الله سكينته عليه. Allah brought down his sakina, his tranquility upon him, not upon them. And this is quite significant. فأنزل الله سكينته عليه. It doesn't say عليهما. It doesn't say that Allah brought down the sakina on both of them. Even though all along the ayah, it talks about two people. إِذْ هُمَا فِي الْغَارِ إِذْ يَقُولُ لِصَاحِبِهِ لَا تَحْزَنِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ مَعَنَا فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَتَهُ عَلَيْهِ While those two were in the cave, he tells his companion, do not grieve, Allah is with us. Allah revealed or brought down his sakina, his tranquility upon him. And this is quite significant. If we have a pause in here, um, if we see the um, occurrence of Sakina in the Quran it occurs in five other places one of them to do with the uh, coffin of Musa and the Jews mm -hmm. and the other four to do with the Mu'mineen and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in short uh, the, there are the, the other four reveal to us that the, the Sakina Allah descends the Sakina on the Mu'mineen and no one else if you like, Allah doesn't, doesn't descend, this, doesn't bring, bring down the sakina upon the kuffar. This is one. And whenever Allah brings the, down the sakina on, on Rasulullah, He brings it on the mu'mineen as well. It says, وَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَتَهُ عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَزْدَادُ imana. Allah brings down the sakina on the mu'mineen so that their iman, their faith enhances, increases. Okay, so this is a criteria that it only comes, Allah only descends, brings down the sakina on the mu'mineen, those who have faith in their heart. And the purpose of that is to increase their, their faith, to increase their iman. In other verses we say, فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَتَهُ عَلَىٰ رَسُولِهِ وَعَلَىٰ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ So when there is the Prophet and the mu'mineen, uh, uh, when the Prophet and the mu'mineen, he brings down the sakina on the Prophet and on the mu'mineen. Not, for example, on the mu'min on the mu'minin only, or on the prophet only, sallallahu alaihi wa Because some say, oh, um, the prophet doesn't need the sakina. Okay, the others do, um, and this is not true because we have the ayah: "Wa anzal Allahu sakinatuhu ala rasulihi wa ala mu'minin." So, we, as I said, we have these two verses. One is that Allah descends the sakina on the mu'mineen to, inc to increase their iman. The other one is that when it descends on, the, on Rasulullah, he also descends on the mu'mineen. But in here, the sakina was brought down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi alone and not on his companion. Okay, that's quite interesting. So it's, it's like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this ayah is trying to give you a hint. Ahsan. Yeah? Mm. Uh, and this hint is basically that that second person, whoever it was, okay, not getting the tranquility that means is not a mu'min. That's right. That, that's quite disturbing. That's right. Yes. So from this ayah, uh, we understand this person, Mr. X, doesn't really have much iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no. and his holy prophet. Any iman. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, from here, from, from this very important ayah, we, are, we, we take this with us. We'll take this with us. Inshallah, further on, we can, we can take a lot more. Uh, at the end of the day, we, we want to uncover the truth and expose the truth. And there's no reason for holding back. Yeah. <clears throat> now, um, at that cave, did anything else occur? Any, a, a, any other incident, a, a miracle maybe? Because I do remember that there's a very famous event that occurred with um, the cave when, when the Quraysh were looking for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa um, with the, the bird. If you can please uh, share, share some of your knowledge and enlighten me on regards to that event. Um, they say that... Um uh, they followed the, if you like, 
the print, mm, the, um, uh, the footprints, the, the footprint or the trace of the prov mm. uh, of uh, uh, the, if you like, the, these two people, mm -hmm. uh, the prophet and uh, um, and his companion, and they came to near the cave, and um, the guide who was the expert in identifying the footprints mm -hmm. or any kind of prints and distinguishes whether this is. Uh, of what kind of individual or what kind of animal and so on. The guide said he noticed that there is, a, if you like, a bird sitting in its, ne uh, in its nest and also a cobweb uh, uh, on the, in the, the entrance of the cave. And it said that he said um, uh, he couldn't have gone, Muhammad and his companion, they couldn't have gone inside the cave because without damaging the cobweb, yeah, for the cobweb example, and, so and the nest. Okay. So this is, if you like, what. Um, is narrated uh, uh, okay. to us. Um, on the issue of the companion, if I may, um, um, as I said, um, the majority of Shia and Sunni scholars say the companion was Abu Bakr. And uh, there was one mention in the book of Sulaim reporting on the events of the Saqifa, mm. uh, where they um, basically, it was, if you like, um, they did in their, they Usurp the Khilafah from Amir Mu'neen yes. alayhi salam. Which, inshallah, we would like to cover inshallah, later on. Later on. Um, yeah. But the point was that it, in order to justify that um, uh, Abu Bakr qualifies for, uh, to take over, yeah. uh, Omar was saying that you are, he is the one, you are the one uh, who was the companion of the Prophet mm -hmm. uh, in the cave. And they forgot the rest of the uh, ayah, um, yeah. making Inter it sound as if it's a, some sort of an achievement. Where in fact, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is quite an. Yeah, uh, it, uh, yes. he, they treat it as. The, the, yeah. the point is that in that debate, mm -hmm. he was using that to say that he was Sahib al Ghar, mm -hmm. he was the companion on the cave. Yes. And he was the one, that is Abu Bakr, was the mm -hmm. one who accompanied the Prophet uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the cave. So, okay. Sahib al Ghar was Abu Bakr. And um, these are the kind of evidence that we have, um, which um, uh, show that uh, the companion uh, is Abu Bakr, and that is something which is agreed by the majority of Sunni and Shia scholars. Right from the beginning, where, where the Prophet was at his, if you like, he didn't have all the support that he wanted, when he used to approach the people, he used to tell them, I'm not going, I, I don't expect, I, I'm not going to coerce anyone. I tell you what my message is. Um, you, you either uh, listen to it and believe in it and adopt it, or um, you leave it. Uh, it's all up to you. Um, all I want is I want your, the protection, the sort of protection that, uh, from you so that I can convey my message um, uh, to the people.